Hello and welcome to Theme Park Worldwide where today I'm here in sunny Devon for my first ever visit to Watermouth Castle. This place looks fascinating, I've never been before and I can't wait to share the experience with you all in this vlog. Now I've just parked up on the car park and the location of this family theme park is absolutely gorgeous. Look at the views there just behind me. You've got the harbour down there, you can see the sea out there in the distance, there's horses up on the hills, what more could you want? This place is absolutely stunning. And of course here is the main building itself. Welcome to Watermouth Castle. It was more of a stately home that was actually built in 1825. Then it became a theme park and more of a leisure attraction from 1977. But yeah, look at this, what an entrance and what a location for a park as well. So come and join me as we discover this park for the first time. There's no roller coasters here, but I know that there's a toboggan run and there's a lot of different walkthrough attractions, some smaller flat rides as well. There's a boat ride, uh, even like a snail's tracked ride as well so I'm looking forward to that um, but like I say it's always exciting coming somewhere for the first time and especially sharing it with all of you the viewers so come and join me as we experience Watermouth Castle here in Devon let's go and get inside so there's still a few minutes to go until the entrance opens here at Watermouth Castle. So just thought I'd mention, of course, you've got lots of free parking right outside the entrance here, and it costs £15.50 for an adult ticket to get in. But of course, there's lots of different prices, so check them out over on the official website. So the doors have just opened, and I'm inside, and what a welcome. Look at this, so much to see. So we're gonna be starting off with a walk through the castle itself for making our way out into the gardens and of course where the family theme park is. But yeah, look at this. Hey! Oh, I've got a little band over here at the entrance. Oh my God, there's so much to look at already. So I've only just stepped in through the entrance. The robot band, oh, I love it. That's brilliant. Got his saxophone over there. What a welcome into the park. Already this place has just got so much charm and character about it. And there's loads to see in this first room. All these different machines around. Got the big piano down here at the back. And lots of little displays as well. Some of this stuff's for sale, it's got price tags on. Interesting, honestly I love coming to somewhere like this and discovering it all for the first time. So yeah, this is on the ground floor of the castle. All the different rooms to walk through. The rides don't actually open until 11.30 here, so it gives you an hour. I mean, it opens at 10.30. Gives you an hour to just walk around and take it all in. Oh, this guy's just down here in the bath. <laughs> oh, brilliant. But yeah, I really like how they've got all these different scenes at the start. Like I say, I really didn't know what to expect with all this, you know, so it's always nice when you're sort of blown away with something for the first time. Oh wow, look at this. So you've got this very grand staircase just here. And there's so much to look at. Oh, he's just started moving. Was that on a sensor, I wonder? Oh, that's cool. Got the baby up there. I must say the baby looks very creepy just up there in that pram. <laughs> but yeah, look at this. Make our way around this way. You've actually got lots of old kind of arcade machines around here as well. Some of these you can still actually use. So that's really cool. Get yourself some sweets in there. Also, I see what he's doing. He's cutting like all sort of sharp objects, scissors and knives, animatronic. You can just walk right up to it here. There you go. You're right there, mate. You're on Theme Park Worldwide on YouTube. Oh, I love this. Like, honestly, like, I love my history. I'm, of course, I cover a lot of that over on Adventure Shore, my second channel. So check that out if you've not seen it. But yeah, this combines like both of my passions together, really. A little milk cart just there. Mobile grocery. Oh, the bread looks nice on there, doesn't it? Oh, fancy some of that. Old uh, ice cream stall here as well. Blimey, oh, I love it when you just come somewhere for the first time and you don't know what to expect. And the website just doesn't reveal loads as well, you know, so didn't really know what I was uh, coming in for. Well, this place really does combine so many of my interests together. Look at this model railway that they've got in here. And I'm loving all the signage up the top there as well. We can actually walk around this corner and stand in the middle because of how this layout's been designed. Kind of loops back, so of course you can stand straight into the middle. Yeah, this is pretty amazing, I love it. And look at all the old signage in here as well. Oh, it's awesome, and the building for here as well is stunning. Just so many little things to see in parts of history. Brilliant. I can just stand in here all day watching the trains go around, I love it. And look at this over here, we've got a little traveling fun fair that's coming to town. Here we go, got a classic Helter Skelter there. 
It's got the carousel. Can't quite make that out. Is that a skid under there? Could be. I'll tell you what, we'll see when we go a little bit further around that way. Lots of different stalls. There's another ride there as well. Place your bets on what it is. Not too sure from this side, but we'll find out in a minute when we go around this way. Well, it's actually a little mini dodgems in there. That's cool, isn't it? Thought it was a skid, but no, it's a dodgem. And over here to the left as well, we've got the Grand Tunnel Railway. Look at that, actually moving round as well. Love the models when they have all the movements. Well, some people watching this video might find this room to be a bit weird or creepy, but honestly, when you collect theme park memorabilia like I do, it just becomes the normal, to be honest. Welcome to the Vacuum Museum, or Hoover Museum, however you want to call them. Look at this. Like all different Hoovers around, you've got all the different model numbers on the side. Honestly, it's like the world of theme parks, but for Hoovers. All sorts of stuff around. And you've got this creepy guy just up here. Hello there. Just sat up there in the window. Oh, can you imagine walking around this place at night? Honestly, it'd be really creepy. Got some uh, scales just over here as well. I love how you can use a lot of the things as well. Not the hoovers, they're not expecting you to go around and hoover the carpets. But uh, yeah, you know, you can put uh, like two peas and ten peas in and use quite a lot of the old machines that are around, which is great. Oh, hello there, how are you doing? We've got some hand operated washing machines just down here in action. All these different models to see. Oh, she looks a bit creepy over there. Like I say, can you imagine walking around here like once all the guests have gone for the day? Oh, I love the clock up there. And of course the building is in a fantastic condition, it really is. I like some of the movement that we've got going on here as well. <laughs> yeah, just rocking back and forwards there on his chair. Well, you saw my wristband, I haven't even mentioned that. Yeah, they give you a wristband down at the entrance and you've got to keep this on for your entire visit here to the castle. Also worth pointing out that you can't actually bring a push chair into the castle itself, but you can around the grounds and garden. So yeah, the staff actually move them around for you. Take any valuables off and the staff will move your buggy um, around into the rest of the park. Some of the things just keep getting creepier and creepier in here. Look at him up there. His eyes just going side to side. Oh, in a way, this place kind of reminds me of, in a funny way, of going to somewhere like Efteling or Durham Real in the Netherlands, where they've got a lot of weird things around. That a lot of the stuff doesn't make much sense, and you don't really know what's going on, but you enjoy it anyway. That's kind of what this place reminds me of so far. Like you go through like this little museum, you know. Fantastic, what a building though. And there's just so much to look at. I can see now why they give you like an hour to walk around all of this section before we head out into the main part of the park itself. You're right up there, mate. Simon Cider. Is it Simon Simmons? Simmons Cider. Oh, so we're making our way downstairs then now into the dungeons and look at this. Things are getting even creepier now. Just press the button on the side to activate that. We carry on now down this way. You can also bypass the dungeons if you want to, so they must be quite scary whatever we're going to be seeing. All these little shots. Reminds me of Diagon Alley a little bit walking down here. Love the music. Is that to put you in like a false sense of security? And it's actually going to be really scary, like first scare maze of the year. All these little shops. I like how you can actually walk down the steps and see into the shops as well. Really fascinating. So much time and effort's gone into to putting all these scenes together in here for us to see. Of course, utilising different parts of the castle. Got this little uh, pottery shop just here. And there's the potter in there himself. Not Harry Potter, Diagon Alley. <laughs> Carry on around this way, through the door. We've got lots of different doors that you just like open yourself. So in this section, they've got even more of the old arcade games. And of course, they've also got the change machines around as well. That's really helpful with those. Oh, there we are. Right, where are we going? Don't you just love coming somewhere for the first time? Oh, here we go. The Haunted Vault. If you're easily frightened, walk through the door and do, and do not look left. Okay. Um, oh, wow. We are in the dungeon. Are we in the dungeon? If I'm easily frightened. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there we go. Is that a bit of Peppa's ghost I can see going on there? Oh, there we go, there she is. Oh, that's a nice effect. Oh, I love that. And it's actually gone really cold down here in this scene as well. And then she just disappears. Oh, that's really good use of Peppa's ghost. <laughs> so we've just come around this corner here. Then this just started moving and this guy was there behind it. Really creepy, I'm on my own down here as well, in this part. Oh, we got like the never-ending tunnel 
mirror just there, it's quite a cool effect. And here we go, we're going into the smuggler's dungeon around this way, not suitable for people who are easily frightened. Here we go, moving objects. Oh! I actually do not know what to expect. Oh! Right in there, I think it's a pirate. Hey, you gotta watch your head coming in here as well, the ceiling is really low. And oh my god! <laughs> That kind of effects. And yeah, like the ceiling, it's not like all sort of foam and rubber at the top. It's actually a proper brick roof in here, you know, so got to be careful. Where are we going? Oh God, this is really creepy. In a way, it makes it even creepier. The fact there's no audio at all, and there's nobody else even here with me in this section. <laughs> Just ruin across on a chain. Is that a crowd? <laughs> it is so dark down here, like I can't see anything. This is that genuinely terrifying. Well, it was only a small section of the dungeon, but yeah, it was absolutely terrifying in there, especially on my own. Let's uh, go around this way, shall we? Oh, we got the huge bike just there. Should we have a, uh, a sit on the top of that? I think we can actually go through these uh, bars just here. <laughs> This is one of the most bizarre places I think I've ever been to, but I love it. It makes a really interesting vlog as well. Could be somewhere for the first time and not know what to expect. And like I say, the website doesn't really give away many details. Those ones don't move much. Oh, I see, there we go, come through this way. <laughs> oh, this is a bit different as well. Can't say I've ever done a little walk through maze like this with the bars. Yeah, really cool. You just gotta find the, uh, find the moving ones. Oh, there's a bike out there. Should we go for a ride? Ah, it's like an old kind of bike museum in here. Hello, Tokyo Disneyland. <laughs> Maybe a bit different to Tokyo Disneyland, this one. So much history. Oh wow, look at this bike. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six people all the way across that. That's amazing, all sorts of different ones. I used to have a unicycle actually when I was a kid, but I bought like from a circus once. Crazy, fun little fact for you. More bikes to be seen just in here as well. Lots of different bicycles for you all to enjoy. How different. Oh, look at that over at the back there. That looks interesting. God, amazing. And yeah, inside this castle, it's got all the smells and it's cold in different rooms. And oh, I love it, all the history of it. Loads more of these old school arcade machines in here as well. And they're all working and you can just have a go. Unfortunately, I've got no cash with me at all. Like, especially with the pandemic, I'm really like card only now. Really should have a bit of cash on me. But uh, yeah, as you can see, I just put two peas in all of these. How cool is that? Loads of different ones. An old school grabber machine here. Is it a grabber machine? Oh yeah, it is, there you go. Put all the levers on the front. And there we go, we've got uh, Peppy the Clown just over here as well. Well that was awesome inside the castle itself. So much to see in there, all the different displays, it's really nicely laid out as well. And there's just so much to see, you can spend a good couple of hours looking round in there. My favourite part's probably got to be the model railway though, I've got a bit of a soft spot for that. Um, outside then here now, you've got this little courtyard area, there's a cafe over there, and there's also a water fountain show here. That's one of the things that I did know existed here at Watermouth Castle. I love a good fountain show, and again this one's quite historic. So I'm really looking forward to that. But uh, I've not actually shown you the map yet, so we're gonna sit down over here and I'll show you the park map. But before I do just that, we've got a little animatronic show going on just here. I did wonder what had just started up behind me. Here we go, we've got Goosey Gander and the geezers. There you go, all up the top just there. Oh, I love that. Five animatronic geese doing a little show for us all. And like I say, this is like the outdoor seating for the cafe just here. So it's really nice how you've got these animatronics so in a perfect location. This place is lovely, it really is. Small little carousel there as well. Loads of nice planting around. It's in a really good condition, this place. It really is. As you can see, we're going to carry on through that uh, gate shortly and head down to Adventureland, Merry-Go-Land, Gnomeland, that sounds interesting, and more to discover down there as well. But uh, yeah, let's have a look at the map. So as you can see from the map, it's actually quite a big place and there's lots to see here for a family day out. Down here at the bottom, of course, you've got the castle itself and the dungeon labyrinth, so we've already been through that section. And off here to the left-hand side, you can see the rest of the park and all the different areas that they've got. Uh, Gnome Land, I mean, this building looks quite interesting. Number 40 says that that is the Troll Cave. So yeah, I look forward to uh, seeing that. Lots of other different quirky parts to see at this park, it seems. Adventureland, that's got a few different rides for the kids, so we'll have a look around 
down there and show you what there is for if you're going to be visiting. There's a boat ride there as well. And then, of course, up at the, here at the top, you've got the uh, toboggan run. Of course, you've got the snails up there as well, number 15. Look forward to those. You've got a mini golf, more play areas, and there's a hedge maze up the back just there. And then Merry-Go-Land, which has got some more small little flat rides for the little ones to enjoy. Um, so yeah, quite a lot to see here. Like I say, the ride's open from 11.30 until 4.30 today. Um, so yeah, we'll take a walk down there as soon as it opens up. So like I mentioned when we were inside the castle, if you have got a push chair, you can't actually take it inside that first part of the experience here, and then you pick it up there just behind us. Yeah, the staff just bring it round from the entrance. That's because, of course, um, you yeah, have some quite tight corridors in there, some tight steps, that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, just bear that in mind if you are coming here. Um, but yeah, we're going to carry on down this way now. It seems like the rest of the park is set a little bit of a walk um, further back from the castle itself, and there's all sorts of little uh, attractions to see along the way, lots of different um, scenes that are activated when you press the buttons here we go then so it says press to operate it's like a doorbell isn't it oh here we go hey <laughs> bit of spinning round going on in there oh my god it's like a tagada going on isn't it <laughs> honestly this place is really starting to remind me quite a lot now of Efteling in the Netherlands if you've never seen the vlogs that me and Charlotte have done from there then make sure you check them out just like this little forest that you walk through and all the animations and interactive this is really starting to remind me of that now Honestly, it's so unique, this place. I mean, we've got people's back gardens and houses just down here. Now it doesn't feel like I'm in a theme park at all. It's like I'm just walking along a country pathway somewhere, you know, which is crazy. Like I say, it's definitely set quite further away from the rest of the castle in terms of where the rest of the park is. I wonder how that is. I mean, were these part of the original grounds of the castle or maybe in the 70s when it opened more of a, a theme park or leisure destination, they actually decided to buy more land and expand up this way? I'm not too sure, but yeah, if you live down in these houses then uh, yeah you're just gonna have people walking past at the bottom aren't you all the time enjoying the theme park there's a funny noise coming from this cave just over here so i thought i'd come and have a closer look just to see what's happening oh 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 my god oh, <laughs> oh my god that actually really scared me what even is it is it a dragon a crocodile it's a crocodile oh my god i wasn't expecting that proper jumps <laughs> must be sensor activated when you come close fly me jump scare oh and there he goes Honestly, it gave me the fright of my life, that did. Anyway, we're gonna head up now into Gnomeland, the village of little people. And there's one of them just there, peeking out for us to see. How you doing up there? <laughs> oh, this is a gorgeous location though, around here. I mean, look at the views, it's pretty stunning. That's Merry-Go-Land just over there. And what a nice day for it as well. I feel like I'm abroad. Perfect weather for it. But yeah, you got some of the little uh, junior rides over there. Of course, we'll take a look once we come down from this section. But yeah, what a unique location, stunning. Honestly, it's really giving me F-telling vibes now. You've got a nice uh, Dutch windmill up there as well. We're going into the troll cave then now. Looking for a big troll. Oh, there's a button to press there. There we go. They're quite hard to press, these buttons are. You're right there, I'm looking for a troll. Can you tell me where I can see one? What, round this way to the right? Okay, thank you. Looking for a big troll somewhere. Where is he? Oh, we've got another button to press. I heard a noise coming from here. Oh, there he is. There's the big troll. What is with this music? <laughs> oh, blimey. Watermouth Castle, everybody. We've got some uh, pretty depressing music playing in here. It's <laughs> had another troll cave now. There he is just over there with all his eyes lit up. No movement on this one, like the one just. But yeah, you've got all these different buttons. There's so many to press to set off lots of different interactives. Oh, there we go. A bit of movement with the rocks down at the bottom. Oh, and off it goes. There's buttons absolutely everywhere with so many interactives. You've got the gnome weather station over here. But yeah, this would be a great family day out. Like, can't wait to bring my kids here one day. Come and see this place. I love it. Oh, God, that is very creepy in there. I think it's the music that makes it even creepier as well. Oh, I love it. But yeah, you can tell like, a lot of this area is quite new or at least have redone some of these. Everything's in really good condition as well. Like all the signage is nicely painted up and very clear, um, which is always good to see. Not this wonky building now. It looks like a bit of a crooked house or something around here. There we go. Can we get inside? There we go. Let's have a little look inside the Tilting house. Mind your head. Here we go. Oh, there you go. Just a, a pole in the middle. Well, there you go. <laughs> thought there was gonna, oh, thought there'd be a bit more inside it. Oh my God, you soon come down to this bottom corner. But yeah, got a little uh, 
pole just there in the middle. Well, make of it what you will, viewers. I'm not doing any dancing today. Right, well, I said that this place reminded me a lot of F-Telling. Well, now it really does because it looks like they've got their own version of Long Neck just over here. And on the map, he's actually called Long Neck. Now, of course, if you've seen our vlogs from F-Telling, his neck just stretches all the way up to the top. And this little one looks very different. But I tell you what, it's definitely like Long Neck. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's moving, but you can definitely tell that his neck there would normally stretch out. If you're watching this and don't have a clue what they're on about, honestly, check out our F Telling vlogs and you'll see exactly why this place reminds me of like the British version of F Telling. Like, honestly, I want to know more about this version of Long Neck. Like, how old is he? Like, when was he first put in? What's the history behind it? I'm just trying to see if there's any buttons or sensors or anything around here. Uh, I'm really not too sure, you know, so I would definitely activate him. Or I don't know if he just goes off every so often. I'm really not too sure if that was a sensor or there's no buttons or anything around here. I've even tried sitting on the seats just in case that activates it because you can see there's wires coming from the bottom. I was thinking maybe you have to sit on the seats for it to go off. But yeah, I can't seem to get him going. So I'll have to have a little walk up here again later and see if we can see him in action. Or he might just be broke, but I can't believe it. It's long neck. <laughs> Honestly, I can't believe they've got their own version of Long Neck. It's crazy. Now, if you've been in Justin's house at Alton Towers, they've got one of these here where you put your ball in. There we go. And then you lift it up and then you press the button. Hey, and shoot it out. Oh, if only Charlotte was here with me on this little trip. And yeah, we could have uh, shot some nice foam balls over at her. You're walking through this uh, net just here just to stop the balls rolling out everywhere, I think. Um, but yeah, this is Adventureland that we're heading into next down here at the bottom. You can see some of the little rides there. I feel like I'm in some mansion and it's garden, to be honest. And I suppose that's what it was all about. This big stately home with all its grounds. And you can see there's like a wall going around the edge at the top. So yeah, I'm really not too sure, but there's the uh, boat ride down there at the bottom in the trees. Can't see any boats going round. As you can see, it's not very busy on the day that I'm filming this. And there's also a mill just down here as well. So we'll take a look at that on the way into Adventureland. Oh, how pretty is this? So picturesque with the water wheel just there and the mill just down here. Lovely. Just sit here all day just listening to the sound of that water cascading down there. Love a good water wheel. Look at that. Wonder how old this is. I'd love to know. And we've got another one of these little buttons to press here. So let's put it in. Here we go. Oh, oh it's a bit haunted. Spooky. In there, there's a skull. Oh, and he changes. That's it. There you go. End of the show, I think. <laughs> Here we go. Now, I know that you used to be playing the drums in these vlogs whenever there is some. Well, I've not found any yet at Watermouth Castle, so we can have a go with these. Here we go. Oh, oh that's a nice noise. There you go, that's enough of that. <laughs> oh, there's Humpty Dumpty up there sitting on the wall. Hope you don't fall. But here you got these lovely gardens just here. Really nice selection of water features. And we're gonna head around this way now towards Adventurelands. Well, what really makes this place is the location and also how well looked after it is as well. It's very clean. There's so many different seating areas and little cafes. Honestly, it's gorgeous. You can just see the castle down there in the distance and also the sea there just behind it. But yeah, how this place is looked after really makes it. Everything's really fresh. In terms of some of the little kids rides that you've got here at this park, uh, then you've got the spinning cups ride just over there. You've just got another small little spinning um, flat ride just down there on the left as well. So yeah, just gives you a bit of an idea on some of the other um, different attractions that are available. But uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be going on them ones. But uh, yeah, I was trying to go on the uh, boat ride just around this corner. That's if it's on. I've not seen any boats going around at all. But yeah, I think the station for it is going to be just here on the left. Oh no, there's a member of staff. Yeah, we're going to have a ride and let's, uh, let's see. Why not? It's a jungle boat ride, I think, through Adventureland. Really well themed here in the station. All the monkeys just up there. Oh, bit of movement as well, and here we go, on the boat ride, in the lovely sunshine. Oh, hope we don't tip up. There we go. Oh, this is really peaceful. Oh, what the hell is going on there? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Having a bit of a dance along there. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, I think the uh, toboggan runs somewhere up the top just there. 
probably up that hill. So of course, with it being a toboggan run, it's got to come down a hill somewhere to get the speed. Quite a nicely themed ride, this. Got a tiger just over here. Hello there, tiger. Are you going to move? Any movement with these? Oh, it's like cuddly toys that you win in arcades, don't they? Water's nice and clean though, which is good. So we carry on around this way on the little boat ride. Has he got a microphone there? Oh no, it's a water pistol. Oh no, it's a hose pipe. Oh no, he's going to try and soak me. This is where the camera could get destroyed. Doesn't look very operational. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Famous last words. It doesn't look. <laughs> look at him having a big squirt. Oh my god! Blimey! It's me thinking. Oh, it doesn't look very operational. There you go. <laughs> Famous last words there, Sean. Charlotte would not be impressed with that. <laughs> of course, I got her on Tyler Wave the other day down at Thorpe Park. So check out that vlog if you've not already seen it. What really makes this ride is all the tropical planting as well. I actually feel like I'm abroad today with this lovely weather and out in the rainforest or something. It's very nice. Oh, losing a bit of momentum here. Might have to push us along a bit. <laughs> there we go, in the ticky 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 room. <laughs> Felt like I'm back at Disneyland. There's yeah, some lovely big planting around here, which is nice. Oh, I'm not the only ones on here. There's another boat of people going around. It's quite a long uh, ride as well, quite a long layout. Yeah. Oh, he's just soaked me again. We had some more water squirters at the side. I like how he's got his little uh, hula outfit on there as well. <laughs> lovely. And there you go, this takes us around towards the end of the boat ride. Yeah, about a five minute ride. Nice, slow, gentle attraction. But like I say, the planting's nice, the audio, some good special effects. I'm not complaining about getting wet on a nice day like this. It's lovely. I think we've got one more scene around this corner. Thanks for the music. And there we go, back round to the uh, station. Nice little ride that, quite well themed. I think we're going to head up the hill now towards the toboggan run. I've not seen it yet, but I'm pretty sure it's up this way from looking at the map. Well, after taking Charlotte for a ride on Tidal Wave at Thorpe Park the other day, I was certainly in the doghouse. So yeah, we best go into the uh, doghouse theatre. Here we go. Only one in here. We've got a little animatronic show going on. Little Pacoon bus stop. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Loads of seating in here. Sit back and enjoy the show. Oh, I love the fans with the conveyor on there as well. Amazing theming. Like, this would look out of place over at Disney, like in Frontierland. It's kind of like this park's version, really, of Country Bear Jamboree. Have you ever seen that at the Disney parks? A lot of time and effort has to go into programming these animatronic shows. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Very nice to see. Oh, what's really cool about this as well is that it's not all just down there at the front on the stage. We've got this lovely lady singing at the back here as well. Bit of big spender going on. Love it. You know what? Hey, big spender! Bam, 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 bam! Spend a little time with me. Will do! <laughs> Love that! What a brilliant little animatronic show! And that runs every 30 minutes down here at Watermouth Castle. But yeah, that was great. I liked all the interaction around the sides as well. And yeah, like at the end, it's not just a curtain that comes across, like it all just boards over, like you can see there. Fascinating. A lot of thought went into that. Oh, some little water effects just going off here as we're walking along. And yeah, I mentioned earlier on that they've actually got a mini golf course here that's included in our mission. Well, here it is. Yeah, just a little nine hole mini golf course that you can just enjoy down here at the castle. But yeah, no like massive theming or anything around it. But you know what? It's including the price and you get some lovely landscaping and some great views all around here as well. Yeah, just thought I'd show you that, of course. No point in me having a go, because I'm here on my own. Nobody to, uh, to beat, is there? You know, can't show Charlotte up with the golf. But <laughs> check out the Butlins vlogs if you haven't already seen them. We had a bit of a friendly competition in our day three vlog. But yeah, we'll uh, oh, carry on up this way. You're right there. <laughs> carry on up this way towards the toboggan run. Or at least I think it's up this way. That's the beauty of coming to a park for the first time. You don't have a clue what's where. Nice big sign pointing down this way then for the toboggan. So I've got the GoPro on and we'll take you along for the ride. 
There's a bit of information on the height restrictions for this one. And of course, if it's wet when you visit, it will be closed. So yeah, let's go and have a ride and we'll see you on there. It's time for the toboggan run. Looking forward to this. Here we go then, just leaving the station area on the toboggan run. Up to the lift hill, quite a steep lift hill on this one. Up we go. Hey, Yeah, really steep lift hill. Blimey, yeah, normally these aren't uh, quite as steep as this. And here we go, I don't know how long the layout is or anything on this one. I've not seen a POV, I've seen nothing. So we're going to find out with this one what it's like. I'm looking at it, it doesn't look too long. Quite a short layout, I think, but we'll see what happens. Gorgeous day for it though, sun shining, get a nice suntan. Lovely. Nobody else on it, so yeah, I'm not going to have any issues of uh, the risk of bumping into anyone else. There's nobody else on here. Here we go, thank you. Here we go. That's it, we're just going to go for it, viewers. Here we go. Normally on these, I don't like to brake, but when it's my first time... <laughs> oh, I burned up a lot of speed. Ah! Oh my God. You need to brake on this one, else you'll come flying off. Oh my God. <laughs> it's a fast one. Whee. Oh, blimey. <laughs> oh, I thought that was it then. I thought it was coming off. There we go, and through the curtains. Lovely. That's it, toboggan run. That was good fun, that. Well, it was quite short, the toboggan run, but it was really good fun. Had a few laps round on there, and yeah, you can build at some pretty good speed. Normally, I don't brake much on those, but with that one, kind of felt like I had to with how fast I was going down there at the bottom. Didn't want to work flip upside down or something or roll down the grass. But uh, yeah, that was good fun, that was. Going to go on the uh, little snail ride over here now. Honestly, this reminds me of uh, Joyland in Great Yarmouth, and of course, uh, Great Yarmouth Pleasure Beach as well. They've both got this style of uh, snail ride there. It's a bit of a childhood classic for me back there. Obviously, I've not done this one before, so yeah, we'll have a, a ride around, why not? Oh, it's like being back at Joyland, look at this, here we go, got my snail, he's got his top hat on just there. And yeah, this looks nowhere near as old as the other ones, I'd love to know a date when this opens. But you know what, you get some great views from on here. Don't think there's any drops in this one, but there is a little dark ride scene down there at the bottom as well. And yeah, the landscaping at this park is wonderful, it really is. Like, all of the trees, all the bushes that are all cut, it looks great. Oh, he's got his school tie on. <laughs> oh, I love it, great fun. Yeah, let's see what's in this little dark ride scene at the bottom, don't have a clue. Into the shed we go. Oh, look at this. All the teddy bears, oh wow. So much movement. It's just full of teddy bears. Oh, how cute. They're building something down there. This way, that way, backwards, forwards, over the Irish Sea. <laughs> Look at them all. Oh, they're in a little tea party. Oh, it's amazing. So much to see in there. Oh, I love that. Carousel in the middle. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. That was really nice. How different. Worth pointing out, it is quite a hilly park here. So yeah, if you are coming, and like I say, if you've got little ones or push chairs, you know, there's gonna be a lot of pushing. How you doing? You all right? Hey! There's gonna be a lot of pushing that you've got to do to come up all these different hills. Got some fans on the ride, love it. Wasn't expecting to see anybody today, a small little park like this, but you know what? It's always wonderful to visit somewhere for the first time. And the staff have been great here as well. Lovely ride there on the snails, and I really liked the dark ride scene in there as well. Would have been nice if it had a few dips and drops on there, but you know what? I did enjoy it for what it was. I thought it was a great family attraction. This is a really good family park. There's so much to see here. If you come in here with kids, it's a full day park in my opinion. So many little quirky areas to enjoy and explore, such as the maze that I'm in now, a good old hedge maze. I've already been walking around for about 10 minutes, and uh, yeah, I can't seem to be finding my way to the exit anytime soon. I'm not too sure, I just keep coming to dead ends. Honestly, I am genuinely lost inside this maze. I've been in here a good maybe 15 minutes now. I just can't seem to be finding the way out at all. Look, just keep coming to dead ends. It's a proper good old hedge maze, this one. It's not like the one at Pleasure Beach, you know, where you can easily find your way out. With this one, you get properly stuck in here. I've got to go back down this way again. Maybe it's round here. I'm not too sure. I could be here for a long time, viewers. This vlog may never get uploaded if I get uh, lost in the hedge maze here at Watermouth Castle. I could be in Devon for weeks. <laughs> 
Well, I finally managed to escape there from the hedge maze. I was in there about 15 minutes in total. It didn't even look that big from the outside, but yeah, I proper got lost in there. Heading now then down into Merry-Go-Land. As you can see, you've got the little plane ride up there at the top. Some lovely landscape gardens here as well, which is very nice. Covered over seating areas. This place is really well maintained. Yeah, I just thought I'd show you these little junior rides they've got down here as well. Got the little uh, swinging boats just over there. A tiny little carousel here as well. It's like it's got a bit of history to it, doesn't it? Unless it's just really good theming. And of course you've got the little spinning aeroplane ride just over there as well. But yeah, really nice. Just love how looked after this place is. You know, everything's painted up really nicely. It's lovely. There you go, you've got this very unique clock just over here as well. Look at that. Yeah, like the water just coming down the middle of it. Love things like this. Really different. I like how it's still making that TikTok noise as well. Brilliant. Yeah, and there's a look at that carousel. Yeah, it looks really old, doesn't it? Really historic attraction. But yeah, shortly, going to be making my way down to see the water show, water fountains. Looking forward to this. Love a good fountain show here at Theme Park Worldwide. Not seen one for ages. Yeah, that should be really good. Looking forward to seeing it. So I was just walking down this way and then spotted a sign that says this way to the rolling barrel. So I'm thinking maybe this is going to be a vortex, you know, what spins round. Is that a machine there, is it? Here we go. Da, 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 da. He stopped on the wall there as well. And there it is, it's like a spinning barrel. Well, basically what uh, Alton Towers haven't fixed yet inside Jewel, a trommel tunnel. Yeah, that's exactly what this is with a mirror down at the bottom. So of course you can just stand in here and yeah, it feels like of course you're spinning all the way upside down. Quite disorientated actually if you spend a long time inside one of these. And I find it even more disorientating if you stand just here at the end actually, um, just outside um, of the tunnel and it really feels like you're spinning round even more. Blimey, this place has got so much character, it really has. Just before we head down to that fountain show, thought I'd show you this nice little waterfall. And we've got some goblins just over there as well, playing in the grass all along the side. Yeah, and you can just sit here and chill out and look out at the house just there. I reckon somebody lives there. I wonder if it's maybe the park owners. I mean, I know that it is a family-owned theme park, so yeah, possibly they live there. I'm not too sure. But yeah, I do like the big fork that they've got just out the side there for doing all the gardens and topiaries. Look at this, really nice. Everything is so well looked after here, honestly. It reminds me a little bit of F-Telling, a little bit of Europa Park, but uh, like I say, without loads of rides. It's more about the walkthrough attractions here. And of course, yes, you've got the nice kids' rides here as well to enjoy if you're a family, but I would love to see them put in maybe a small family roller coaster here because I feel like that would put them on the map. I really do. There really is so much to discover at this park. It's unique, it's quirky, it's got so many different little things to enjoy. Honestly, I think it's a fantastic family park. And if you're coming down to Devon, or of course making your trip down to Cornwall, come down here and experience this park because I think you'll really enjoy it. Still one more pretty big thing to see and something that I'm very much looking forward to, and that is the Water Fountain Spectacular. It's located in an underground auditorium. So I'm looking forward to this. It was originally built for the Festival of Great Britain. It's got a 1920s organ that does all the soundtrack for it and along with that as well there's lots of different lighting over a thousand water jets honestly i think this is going to be really good so i'm going to head down there now shows are every half an hour on the half hour so yeah i'm going to go and uh, head down to the theater and we'll go and check this out i think the venue is going to be quite nice for this as well and you know me i love a good fountain package so i think this is going to be right up my street here we go then, so I'm inside the venue for the water show. As you can see at the top just there, it gives you all the information about show times. And so uh, yeah, just before we go and sit down at the bottom, just thought I'd show you around here, this nice little balcony that we've got. Of course, you can get a great view looking down over the underground theatre here. Very nice, isn't it? What a lovely venue. Quite a small venue, but that really adds to it actually. Very quaint, very patriotic up there with the uh, flags as well. So yeah, I'm gonna take my seat down there shortly and put in some highlights. It did also say strobe lighting on the door is used, so beware, there is gonna be some flashing lights coming up over the next few minutes of this vlog. But yeah, you got all these different models up here at the top and some more seating. So yeah, like I say, flashing lights coming up. I'm gonna take my seat and I'll put in some footage from the fountain show.
And just before I head out of the theatre from the very patriotic fountain show, just thought I'd show you this guy just here, who's having a little bit of a wee in the fountain. There you go, even got a little funny sign at the side as well. Oh dear. So you've just seen some highlights there from this spectacular fountain show. I very much enjoyed that and loved how much movement there was, not just with the fountains, but also set pieces in there as well. Um, I loved how there was a pair of hands just clapping up there in the ceiling. Of course, you had the flags that were waving side to side. It was very patriotic and I loved the music in there. The sound of that 1920s organ was brilliant. All the lighting, and yeah, overall it was a 15 minute show. Uh, five minutes of the organ at the start and then building up for the fountain starting. Love a good fountain show show and it was certainly great to see it. I've just made my way then out of the exit here of Watermouth Castle and I tell you what the views just keep on getting better like it's stunning around here it really is. You walk up some steps and then you're back here on the car park the free car park and that's a really important thing with here. It's very well priced this place um, like £15.50 for a ticket you're getting so much included in that and um, that's brilliant it really is. Of course I started off inside the main part of the castle itself so much to see in there all the exhibitions very much enjoyed that um, all the old arcade machines that they've got in there as well. You can spend an hour just going around with those. Had some good scares down in the dungeon. That was really good fun and very well thought out. All of the scenes in there um, were brilliant and the castle's in a really good pristine condition. Then made my way uh, along that pathway into the main part of the park and what can I say, it's beautiful. This place is really well looked after. It's like a mini Efteling in Europa Park um, here in the UK. And as much as it doesn't have loads of big rides, it's not about that. It's the experience here. It's got a real relaxed, chilled out vibe and you can tell they really care the owners of this park. All the landscaping, it's so well looked after. There's not like bits of paint flaking off and that sort of thing. The park is pristine. It is absolutely gorgeous in there. It really is. And if you're coming down here um, to Devon, definitely come and check it out. And of course, if you're making your way down to Cornwall, which I am um, at the moment, then yeah, just nip in and come and do this park because it's really enjoyable. In terms of the rides, they've only got a few smaller rides, but you know what? They were good fun. The boat ride was well themed. The snails was just a classic. And of course, the toboggan run was brilliant as well. And the fact that that's included in admission is brilliant. Um, I do think it would be great to see them put a coaster in here. A little family coaster would be a perfect next investment for this park. And I feel like that would really put them back on the, well, I say back on the map, on the map firmly. Um, you know, it's clear that this is a very popular park uh, with people that come down to Devon, but I would love to see more people come in here and enjoy it and I think putting in a roller coaster a family coaster will be brilliant it needs to be nothing huge just a nice step up ride for them and it's clear that they've got the space and, and capabilities to do that here the theming of it could be brilliant too and fit into one of the existing areas but overall I've really enjoyed it here at Watermouth Castle really like the fountain show the toboggan uh, was probably my highlight and just walking around and seeing all the quirky little areas that there is here as well and just seeing how well looked after it is to come to a UK theme park and see it so well well maintained like this um, is pretty rare if I'm being honest and it sounds to me to say it of course there's quite a few parks out there that really do care about the appearance uh, Poulton's Park really comes to mind but uh, quite a few of the parks they just let things slip when it comes to the overall look of the park the landscaping um, like I say there's no paint flaking off it's just a really well looked after park this and it's like look at the grounds are all around the car park you know all the planting it's just so nicely maintained and for me that can make or break a park and Watermouth Castle have really got that one right here in my opinion but uh, there you go thank you so much for joining me my first ever visit here to Watermouth Castle it's been fantastic it really has I very much enjoyed it really recommend coming down here if you're a family or even just an adult group come in here to enjoy this park if you appreciate theming and details and just want a nice relaxed chilled out day this is the place for you I've been here about three and a half hours today which has been perfect to see everything and of course I'm making my way down to Cornwall where there's going to be some content coming up on my other channel Adventure Sean so so stay tuned for that and there might even be another vlog coming here um, of course on theme park worldwide from Cornwall as well so thank you very much for joining me here on this channel and for my first ever visit to Watermouth Castle here in Devon that leaves me one final thing to say get out there and keep on riding see you in the next vlog